Hi, Mike. Thanks for being our guest here at the uh, at the summit. Um, can you please give a short introduction of yourself? Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Mike Ferguson. Uh, I'm a UK-based independent analyst and uh, consultant specializing in uh, big data, data management and analytics. I've um, been in the industry about 34 years now, uh, which is very long, um, which makes me very old. And um, I've, uh, uh, I started out as a DBA, then I became a co-founder of a company called Cod and Date with Dr. Cod and Good Date, who invented the relational model. And I went from there to becoming a, a chief architect uh, on product strategy at, uh, at Teradata. And, uh, and then about 23 years ago, I became an independent analyst in, in, the, in the field that I'm in now. Okay, thank you. Um, in your first session, uh, you discussed the technologies and uh, architectures to support online transactional processing, workloads <coughs> and operational analytics. What are the main challenges in supporting online transactional processing workloads? Okay, so uh, what I was trying to talk about there was uh, the fact that um, those kinds of applications are having to scale to uh, deal with extreme uh, numbers of concurrent users and uh, therefore a much higher rate of transactions than we've ever seen before. And so for that reason, um, we are seeing the adoption of special purpose databases optimized for storing transactions and also for storing non-transactional data, which is uh, part of a transactional application, such as uh, shopping cart data or uh, session profiles and that kind of information. So, in your talk, you, you go into the, uh, the advantages of these so-called NoSQL uh, system? Yeah, I, I, what I said is that there's NoSQL databases are, are appearing to uh, to help those applications scale, but they, these databases are primarily designed for specific applications, you know, for individual applications to scale, as opposed to a general purpose database that can be shared across multiple applications. So you you, if you want to uh, scale a particular transaction system, you, you're you going to build a, or use a, a NoSQL database to potentially um, uh, store uh, uh, or be able to write and read data at scale. Um, of course, there are some special purpose relational databases that can also uh, are also optimized for extreme transaction processing as well. So this is not purely uh, a problem that can be solved by NoSQL databases. It can also be solved by some specific, uh, 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 sometimes referred to as new SQL databases. So, so uh, if you are using these uh, NoSQL or new SQL uh, uh, databases, what uh, challenges does that give you on the analytics side when you want to uh, get value out of those uh, databases or systems? Well, the, the challenges are, of course, that these systems are optimized for one particular kind of workload, which is uh, high, um, high volume or high velocity uh, reading and writing, they're not really optimized for analytics and that therefore the challenge is that a lot of these databases don't do joins for example which is something you would see a, a lot in, in an analytical environment. Um, so uh, <clears throat> in order to compromise for that either you take the data out of these systems into uh, a system that's optimized for analytics um, so data may come into uh, a deep environment, or alternatively, you put some kind of uh, analytical uh, technology uh, on top of those kinds of data stores, such as uh, Apache Spark, to bring data out of that environment uh, up into memory and do the analytics in memory. So um, uh, I guess that these, these systems are, are more optimized for capturing data at scale, but they're not great at, at uh, 
heavy duty uh, analytical uh, uh, workloads, uh, and that's where we need other technologies. Okay, so so uh, you mentioned uh, Spark, huh? and that's also uh, in your in your session you you go into the details of the of the Spark framework. Uh -huh. So can you uh, describe some of the core capabilities um, which Spark delivers? Yeah, well, so Spark is a general purpose in memory, uh, massively parallel uh, analytical executing environment. So I can build uh, analytical applications using a variety of programming languages like uh, Python or R or Java or Scala. And I can use it for machine learning. I can use it for uh, graph analysis um, on, on data. But, and, and Spark, of course, works in a cluster environment. So it can run in a Hadoop world uh, on a Hadoop cluster, but it can also run on its own cluster, so I don't need a dupe. And um, I can connect to a variety of data stores, including cloud storage like Amazon S3 or OpenStack Swift. I can, I can connect to uh, NoSQL data stores like um, Cassandra, like um, uh, Basho's React, uh, uh, MongoDB, those kinds of uh, NoSQL databases. I can connect to graph databases such as um, Neo4j or, or, or other products that have a, an API called the Tinkerpop API. <laughs> um, and I can connect to HDFS, so the distributed file system, as well as, of course, uh, you know, connect to relational. So I have a lot of flexibility as to where the data is actually stored uh, if I want to analyze it. But Spark gives me the ability to write applications to analyze data. But I can also connect BI tools to Spark SQL to run queries on data that has a, a schema uh, typically associated with it. Okay. Um, in your second session of the event, you talk about uh, agile data strategy. Um, uh, so you mentioned this concept of uh, in a distributed world, uh, so where all the data is distributed across your organization. Um, uh, you, you, you talk about the concept of central centralized maintenance and governance, uh, which you still uh, need. Mm -hmm. But how does this um, relate to agility? So uh, if I talk to business people and mention governance, they all ran away and, and, and they say, well, just give me the data or give me the analytics, I want to continue. So how does this fit with agility? Okay, so there's two problems. I mean, the problem is business wants more and more agility. And at the same time, we have more and more data sources, data being collected in different places. So the data is gradually becoming more and more distributed. So it's harder to access. Uh, so on the one hand, that the business is demanding much more responsiveness and agility, and yet the landscape is saying it's harder to get at the data. And so um, what we're trying to do here is to find a way in which we can uh, enable agility without causing chaos. And, uh, and if there's chaos, then you know, uh, anyone can do anything. And, and we're in a world now of increasing legislation and regulation around data privacy. So we have to remain compliant from a business perspective with these different laws that are being created in the European Union and uh, other parts of the world and, uh, and satisfy uh, um, everybody. Uh, and I think uh, that really requires us to do a number of things. One is to have a data strategy that uh, enables the people, processes, and technologies to come together to achieve that. Two is to um, organize ourselves to succeed. Uh, the number of times I think companies forget about that um, is, uh, um, it worries me. Uh, organizing yourself to succeed is more than half the battle. And, and I, I think that means we have to recognize that it's not IT and, and, and business. It's just the company and its employees. Uh, and it doesn't really matter whether they're IT or business. They need to come together to achieve this goal. 
And so that means that um, it needs leadership to buy into data-driven uh, business. It needs alignment of these initiatives with business strategy to make it succeed. Uh, otherwise, uh, executives won't uh, see the value of what you're doing and why you're doing it. And we need the <coughs> technology to be able to help us uh, bring together people in virtual communities to collaborate, to decide together on how to classify data, what the policies are needed to govern it, and the rules and the technologies to implement that. Um, uh, and so if there are different tools out there from uh, some of them aimed at IT, some of them aimed at business, then we need those tools to integrate in some way. Ideally, of course, it would be shared metadata, but if you can't achieve that, then at least APIs, that kind of thing. Um, but, but always, there's got to be some way to know what's going on across the distributed landscape so that people don't reinvent things because they're not aware that it's going on somewhere else. And that's really why I pointed out the need today for an information catalog to uh, track that and uh, enable um, these different uh, in initiatives to be documented so that people know that they exist. So secondly, I, I also recommended the need to uh, introduce uh, a kind of concept of information producers and information consumers. And then when uh, uh, you know, then we can create a kind of production line for delivering data as a service that can be used across the enterprise. And, and also to, to think about not always copying data all of the time, but to look to potentially use modern technologies like data virtualization to introduce agility and allow you to respond quickly, uh, uh, but then also to deal with dynamic application of governance rules so that you can um, uh, uphold the, uh, uh, the policies needed to remain compliant in different jurisdictions around the world. Okay, thanks for this uh, interview. Okay, thanks a lot.